gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Cole, is recognized for five minutes. I appreciate the extra time my friend yielded me. Um, if I can, just uh, let me start with the discussion about the historical record of the 1990s, and then I want to get specific and pick up where Mr. Rakita left off on the whole issue of debt. You know, if you're on the Democratic side of the aisle, you like to give a lot of credit to President Clinton, and he certainly deserves a measure of credit. If you're on our side, you like to remind the Democrats that, hey, you had a Republican Congress for six years. Uh, you never could have gotten the thing balanced with a Democratic Congress, that's for sure. Uh, but the reality is he had three things going for him that we don't have today. The first one was he had peace. Uh, he didn't have much to do with that, uh, you know, but the Soviet Union was gone and we did get a real peace dividend. And when that lasted throughout the 90s. The second thing was he had baby boomers working, not retiring, and actually probably in their peak earning years. And finally, he had an internet boom that uh, nobody in Washington, D.C. can take any credit for that poured revenue into the Treasury at unpredicted and unprecedented levels in terms of capital gains. We don't have any of those three things today. We're in a state of war, and we're likely to stay in a state of war, and we can debate that, but we're going to be militarily spending more money than, than we were in the 90s as a percentage of our budget and as a percentage of our GDP. Uh, baby boomers are going to be retiring, and we know they're going to be living a lot longer than any, any previous generation. Uh, so they're going to be drawing Social Security and using Medicare longer. And finally, economic booms uh, are, are not predictable, but we certainly don't see a growth rate that's anything like what we've seen in the past. So we've got some, some really unique challenges that transcend, frankly, what uh, our predecessors in the 1990s had. We don't have the favorable conditions to work with that they had. Now, we've been able to bring down the deficit uh, really in a bipartisan way. I don't think we give either side enough uh, credit for this in the last few years. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, obviously a little bit of real deficit reduction. We're spending less on the discretionary side of the budget than, than we have before. Uh, we've had uh, a little bit of economic growth, not anything like we'd like, but that generates a little money. And we actually had a fiscal cliff deal that, uh, you know, did raise federal revenues by several, I think $700 billion over a decade. So there, that, that's, an, that's a tax increase, effectively. And those things have brought that deficit down from $1.4 trillion to a, a little under $500 billion, 460 or 80, somewhere in that range. Uh, are those measures, uh, Director Hall, sufficient to continue to lower the deficit as we look forward? Um, they're, they're not. And what's, what's going to happen is the, the, the effects of the aging population and the rising health care costs are going to become much more apparent going forward, and we're going to have a much harder time um, keeping the, uh, the debt at, it, at its anywhere near its current level. It's going to be actually really difficult to do that. And you touched on this, uh, and, and so I don't want to belabor it with uh, Mr. Rakita, but what's going to be the impact of that debt on economic growth? Well, it, it's, certainly a, it's certainly a drag on economic growth. Um, I think it puts us at risk um, in terms of economic policy if we have another downturn our ability to deal with that. And then at some point we get, we get to a tipping point, right, where, where the debt is just so high um, that, that you have a hard time, the federal government has a hard time borrowing money. Then, then we have a real issue. Is there any way to deal with the debt without dealing directly with entitlement programs? Well, again, we, we have a lot of choices for deficit reduction. Obviously, entitlement programs, the growth of those are, are a big part. Of the, uh, of the growing debt in, in, our, in our forecast. Uh, this committee has put forward a uh, couple of pretty provocative ideas uh, on Medicare and Medicaid that would slow their growth, according to CBO studies. Uh, I, know, I know our chairman uh, has uh, talked about Social Security in the past, and uh, we've had private discussions about the need to have a process or, or address that. Do you know if the administration has put out any proposals on entitlement reform? Um, I, I don't. I'm sorry. And how many years has this administration been in office? Seventh year, I think? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Th that I should have been able to calculate. Well, sorry. that's fair enough. I mean, that uh, obviously I'm leading the witness if we were in a courtroom. But the point is, we, we, we have a huge crisis. We know it's here. Uh, we've been around seven years. It's time to deal with it. And for the this is an area where the administration has to lead, and I think, frankly, this committee has been willing, has put out ideas, and I think the Congress is ready, 
And so I would hope, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'll, and I'll close out, I would just hope that the administration will take that opportunity, sit down, and talk about the real long-term problems we face instead of pretending that they're going to disappear because they're going to get a lot worse. Thank you, gentlemen. The gentleman's time has expired.